A Quiet Place 2. This is a spoiler review. I have a review on my blog, soundofbettermyhead.com. Um, should be no spoilers in there. Especially if you've seen at least one of the trailers. You know, I don't think there should be any surprises. I am giving this a 3 out of 5. Um, it was pretty good. I wasn't blown away with it. Um, I know it's, it's getting pretty good reviews overall, but it didn't knock my socks off. Um, it is basically a direct continuation of the last movie. I mean, it essentially starts right where the other one left off. So it's not like one of those sequels where we see these characters later on on some other, like, new adventure or whatever. This is basically them moving on from, you know, the aliens attacking their house and the dad dying and the, everything catching on fire and where they go next. Um... The first film had, you know, an awesome concept. You know, aliens that have super hearing, so the slightest sound can get you killed. And then seeing this family, how they learn to live and survive in this new world. And it was, it was really, it was really unique. Um, it did lack a little narrative oomph because it wasn't really anything going on for a while until they, near the end when the shit does finally hit the fan but I think it was so kind of interesting the characters were likable you, you were in for the ride um, overall on the first one and then I think they, they nailed the ending pretty good so the whole the whole package was really solid um, you still got the same basic stuff here but it's just not the same it just doesn't have that freshness to it like the last film I feel like this time they find a lot more loopholes with the no sound. You know, they're just underground bunker, more or less, where they'll just feed them concrete so they can have a regular conversation where you hide this like soundproof pipe or whatever it was. And as long as the lid's closed, you know, nobody could hear you at all. Those other points too, where they're whispering or talking really quiet, which is supposedly something, you know, you couldn't do according to the last film's set of rules. It's a little bit nitpicking, but it just felt like, felt like you lose a little bit of tension because they were able to communicate with the cello a little bit more. And they don't have that handicap that made the first one like, oh, if, I, if they say anything, you know, they're screwed. Or another small thing is the family seemed like they always went sh shoeless to make less noise. But when they met the uh, Emmett character, you know, he had his boots on the whole time. You know, everywhere he's going, he's got walking with boots and it wasn't like a big deal. So I don't know, you know, you lost something there. Again, the plot hits kind of a brick wall early on because it's like, okay, they got out of here, now they're hanging out in this guy's house, but what now? There's just this lack of narrative. It's like, okay, they're trying to find somewhere to stay. He really doesn't want them there. Is it a story that they're gonna try to convince them that they could stay, or is the story gonna be that they gotta find somewhere new? So it's just a little muddy in the beginning. You really don't, you don't feel like you're like being pushed to like a narrative, if that makes any sense. There's no like ticking clock or anything. Um, and then there's some big jumps in logic. You know, out of the blue, they pick up this song, you know, Beyond the Sea on this little radio and immediately um, Regan's like, oh, I know what it means. There's an island and this is where we're supposed to go because it's safe. Like, I don't, that's a pretty big jump in like, you know, like I said, in logic, like, oh, yeah, the name of the song is Beyond Sea, well, then these people are on an island. Like, it's crazy that she supposedly picked this up, you know, that quickly. And then she decides that the best course of action is, you know what, let me take my magic earpiece and go off by myself, only telling my brother what I'm going to do, and try to find a boat, and then try to find this island. It just, it's just stupidity. I mean, I, I, it ended up working in the end, but just a major bonehead decision just for plot convenience. Um, and then of course, you know, Emmett's a weird character. He's a decent character, but he's kind of like, hey, get out of here. I don't want you here. Okay, you can stay. All right, now you gotta leave. All right, fine, I'll go get your daughter, bring her back. Okay, now I'm gonna travel with the daughter on this, what could be a fool's quest. It's, I don't know, it's, 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 it's a little too many inconvenience, uh, inconsistencies in the character and just, a convenient happenstance to kind of move things along. Um, for almost no good reason. 
Uh, you got the son decides like, you know what, I'm going to wander around this abandoned building while everyone's gone. And then he ends up seeing a body, he gets scared, and now the aliens are back. Which is just there to be, I don't know, it's just another bonehead move. Again, overall though, I did like the characters. Um, Regan pretty much took the lead role in this version of the story about her mom. Obviously her dad's gone. So she's basically the main character, which is fine. You know, she's a great actress. I mean, all the acting is solid overall, but she's, you know, just really like likable. I think it helps she's got this vulnerability, but she's also got this strength of character. So she's, you know, fun to watch. This movie, it kind of felt a lot more like a, that, the video game thing, like uh, maybe like a Last of Us, because the first one was more or less contained to their, their house and a little scavenging here and there. This one, you're more on the road, you're more seeing like the abandoned cars and the, you know, leftover shoes and t cell phones, just like, you know, the remnants of humanity. You got the guy going with the girl that he so like, you know, gets fond of and has to protect. You got other humans that you're dealing with that are assholes. You know, just so much, it's just, I mean, granted, like all these genres are kind of the same, but this felt a little bit more too similar to like, you know, The Last of Us and these other, you know, similar movies and shows that have come out previously. Again, it's just it's losing that freshness, that uniqueness that this the first movie had. Um, although I did really like the opening sequence where we do see the day that the aliens came to Earth. Um, like I mentioned in the non-spoiler review, you really don't get any more information this time around. You do see some type of fireball coming to Earth, and it sounded like there was another one, at least one other country, and then the aliens are there. And that's really all you get added to the story. And then, uh, that is also, I didn't feel as much tension this time around, because I never felt like the characters were in much danger as they were in the first film. Because, you know, the first movie, Obviously, spoilers for the first movie if you haven't seen it, but you know the, the youngest kid is killed off like early on, so it's like okay, you know everybody anybody could die is the impression they give you. Um, this time there was a moment early where I thought the next son could die, like maybe they're gonna try to replicate that first movie's tragedy just to kind of raise the stakes, but they didn't. And then really from that point on, it felt like nobody was like, expendable. There were points of trying to make they're trying to make you think, oh, this is it. Regan's trapped on the subway and the monster's gonna get her, but you know she's not gonna die just for the narrative point of the story. Like it's it's not that kind of story that they're telling where she goes on this thing and dies and the guy couldn't save her. That's not the story they're trying to tell. And the story about her journey trying to get to this island. So you know she's gonna be fine. And you know when they were trapped in the pipe and the monster's claw at him, you know she's gonna get to the microphone and she's gonna, you know, get the feedback loop playing on the you know on all the loudspeakers and save everybody and the only real questionable mark was with Emmett was gonna make it or not because he was the only expendable character in you know the storyline and the, you know what they were trying to trying to tell um and also it takes up the way that yeah we see the aliens a lot more and they're like they're so fast and so strong but now the heroes do got a weapon against them which they really don't use much you know they use a couple times but still, it's like, all right, now they got a little bit of a safety net, at least some of them. Where before, it's like these monsters are unstoppable and we're screwed if they find us. And the end, the end was just kind of abrupt. It's like, oh, I hung a thing on this on the microphone. Um, job, job well done. The movie's over. I mean, basically, it only is going to get to some radios that are picking up that broadcast and recording for what Emmett said. The, just where they were at in that valley is the only place he could pick that station up, you know. But at the farmhouse and at his previous house, nobody was picking up that signal. So it's not like this signal is going to be broadcast around the world and the aliens are all going to go um, haywire and be, you know, sitting ducks for the humans. And then an interesting twist, which I kind of guessed because these aliens didn't look the most uh, built for swimming, but apparently they can't swim. So I'm guessing the world might not be as in bad a shape as it could have been. You know, presumably there's a lot of islands where they were small enough the aliens didn't show up and the people are probably fine unless they the alien washed ashore somehow. So there's probably more pockets of humanity. Um, there's really not a ton I wanted to say. Just there's some more spoiler things I wanted to get into in this review that I couldn't in the other one. Um, 
really no desire to see a third film. I really didn't think they needed a second. I thought the first film told the story and, you know, told us everything we really needed to know. And the second one was fine, just continued, you know, that. But still leaves kind of a little bit of a wiggle room cliffhanger, so they could probably do another sequel. Um, again, I have the non-spoiler version of this review up on my blog, soundofbettermindhead.com. It's not as rambling as this, this version of it. I got other reviews on there. I got uh, my comic strips, so if you want to check any of that stuff out, uh, that'd be great. And thanks for watching.